Hello and welcome to Living Pro-Life. I'm Brian Westbrook. When did you become pro-life? Was there a defining moment, a slow transition, or have you been pro-life as long as you can remember? For many people, including our guest today, their defining moment was a choice made out of fear and desperation. You may be surprised to know that many within our pro-life ranks once suffered an abortion of their own, and it was that experience that led them to defend the unborn and protect mothers and fathers from the same fate. Nearly one million babies lose their lives to abortion each year in the United States, and sadly one quarter of all women in our country will have an abortion in their lifetime. You likely have heard these numbers before, but behind each number is both a mother and a father. A woman whose life will be changed forever and a man who's normally pushed to the sideline and told that he doesn't matter. These men and women are all around us. They are at the supermarket when we pick up our groceries. They're at the Little League game. They're in our PTA meetings and yes, in our churches. For those who have suffered an abortion in their past and have found healing, these individuals are our greatest advocates. They can share their stories of the pain, regret, and long-term effects of an abortion in their lives. We must pray for and support those who have had an abortion and not alienate them like the abortion industry has. My guest today, Connie Eller, has gone through this trauma herself and has been active in the pro-life movement as a result. Connie doesn't fit the stereotype of a pro-lifer, and she would be the first to say that it takes everyone to change our culture and bring an end to abortion. Connie has spent many years working at a maternity home, putting her pro-life convictions into action, and spreads the pro-life message in communities not normally reached by typical outreach efforts. Let us now welcome Connie Eller. This is Living Pro-Life. Hello, it's Brian Westbrook and welcome to Living Pro-Life. Today we have an amazing opportunity to speak with Connie Eller, who has been working in the pro-life movement for such a long time. She worked for 20 years at a maternity home and has done such amazing work to help us to end abortion. Welcome, Connie. Thank you so much. Very kind of you. And it's a pleasure to be here. Well, it's a pleasure to have you. So, so today we are so blessed to see in the state of Missouri, um, hopefully soon, an abortion-free state. So tell me your thoughts on that. How did we get to where we are today? Um, we had, I think, on record 39 abortions that we know of that happened in Missouri. So tell me about how you first got involved and then maybe how we got to where we are today. Well, maybe I'll start with where we are today. Brian, when I travel around the country, uh, other pro-lifers say to me, how do you do it? How do you Missourians do it? And you know what I tell them? It takes everybody. It takes Coalition for Life. It takes all the pregnancy centers. It takes the maternity homes. It takes the individual grassroots pro-lifers like myself. It takes the legislators. It takes the voters. It takes the pastors. It takes the church members. Um, and of course, it's because God has blessed us with a lot of Missouri power, a lot of pro-life power in Missouri. And it also took all of the people who came before us. So um, what, draw, what drew you to go to those meetings, those early meetings? What, what was the first thing maybe God touched your heart? I, I'm not sure, but what made you seek them out? Well, it, it goes even further back, okay? Unfortunately, when I was a teenager in the state of New York where you didn't even have to tell your parents that you were considering abortion, well, I considered abortion, was sold an abortion by adults. I was a minor, keep that in mind, and I was able to lie to uh, my best friend for the money and go have this abortion without my parents knowing. One thing I can tell now, I was not raised in church. I wasn't a Christian. I didn't know anything about God except for the things you happen to hear in your life. But I can tell you that the, the, um, it was very traumatic for me. Um, it broke my spirit. And I know that the minute I walked out of that abortion clinic, is in, and I was in deep grief. It was like horrible deep grief, remorse. And I walked out of that clinic saying, I will never do this again. I will never have an abortion again. I didn't even know what that meant or what the ramifications were. But I knew right there and then that something broke me. 
and, and there was something that happened to me that um, it was stealing who I was. You know, it's kind of how I say it. So um, that was my first time of saying in my head, I will never have an abortion again, and I will not, in essence, support this thing, you know, whatever. And then, because I like to learn, <laughs> I love school, I love to learn, I then, it was my responsibility to learn what this was and how not to be for it. Mm -hmm. So that took a while, because I was still a teenager. Um, again, you didn't have to tell your parents, so I went home to parents who didn't know. I literally got a fever, a fever. Wow lied to my parents about that fever, told them I had the flu, but mind you, it was heat wave August, yeah. right? And they believed me, right? And I suffered on a sofa, but um, so that's the beginning of knowing that I will never be for abortion, whatever abortion just was, because it just hurt me, okay? So um, a lot of people say that the pro-life movement is only for old white men. <laughs> Uh, so, what do you say to that? I've never been an old white man, and I've been in this movement a long time. <laughs> um, I would strongly suggest to people for any issue, no matter how they feel about any issue, is you must seek out your own information. That has not changed. As a matter of fact, that's even more of a dire need now because some of the information forced on us through TV screens and the media, whatever, social media, whatever, some of it is just not accurate. It's just not true. So you better seek out the truth. Is there anything you would tell an individual who's watching today who hasn't gotten involved in the pro-life movement or is really thinking about or debating this issue uh, for the very first time, what would you say to them and how can they find the truth? They're really gonna have to investigate and learn, okay? And the, the reality is our common sense would tell us that if you're a human being and you're pregnant, you're pregnant with a human being, okay? Our common sense would tell us that. Um, our common sense would tell us that the human being inside of a pregnant woman's body is not her body. You know, could have a different blood type. You know, she's female, the unborn baby could be male, obviously not her body. Common sense. Unfortunately, there's so many uh, confusing voices out there and deception, there's so much deception out there. You have to plow through that. So I am asking anybody listening today to reconsider if you're not pro-life, Consider the importance of being pro-life. Consider the importance of um, trying to at least inform other people you know to prevent abortions, okay? Because abortions, every abortion kills an unborn baby, an unborn human baby. For those that are adamantly against pro-life, like they're all in for abortion, I would strongly say to them, then you have to look inside of you for why you treasure destruction so much. Like, what is your own trauma that you are now imposing trauma against others? Like, where is your unhealed part that you don't even have compassion on a, help, a helpless, voiceless, unborn baby and the mom who's the protector and carrier of this baby? So that's something more spiritual and inner that's happening in a person. And I ask them to consider that, that um, the same compassion that they're supposed to have for people and for themselves is supposed to be extended to the unborn baby. And for those that um, um, may be angry at the women who have had abortions, because there are people like that, they're just angry at that, they gotta let that go. Because again, that's not the only sin out here. They've got their own sin with their own name on it. So Jesus forgives and heals her, he, he forgives and heals you too, <laughs> you know? Um, I would strongly suggest anybody who's in the pro-life movement but not sure what to do or how to, how to proceed or where to step in at, just step in. Yeah. <laughs> Call Brian. Uh, just step in. I mean, there's, look, we're spoiled here in Missouri. Abortion is the losing side. And, and God doesn't want any souls lost. He doesn't want any souls lost. Why are you going to be on the losing side? Get on the winning side. Life is winning. Life is right. God is the giver of life, get on God's side, and then you know what? He'll help you figure out where you belong in this right. pro-life movement. Right. Well, uh, thank you very much, Connie. I, I appreciate your time. It's always an incredible opportunity to hang out My with pleasure. you and, and uh, chat. So again, thank you. Thank you very much.
Thanks for watching our video and the simplest way for you to save even more lives is to share this video with your friends and then make sure to like, comment and subscribe. God bless you.